Hello and welcome to episode 31 where we're going to look at counterfeit microphones. Now my plan was to look at a really quite nasty cheap one um, but a friend of mine sent me something that arrived this morning that's made me have a rethink for today. Um, I'm a convert to Shure SM7B microphones. I've used them on and off occasionally over the years and never been that impressed uh, until we started this series of videos and I put an SM7B up and I have to say I, I've grown quite fond of it now. Um, to my ears the sound is quite neutral and although I'm not following the fashion of having it really close and in my face I'm using it at a distance um, I'm very pleased with it. Um, with the two cameras that we've got here um, there is a small difference in the tonal quality as I go off axis so it gets a little bit duller as I look towards this camera here uh, where the microphone obviously is over here so I can hear that and as I turn I can actually detect that slight change in tone um, but I live with it and I rather like the microphone and from the distance that I'm using it it's proven to be the best one that I have for doing the voiceovers on these videos. But this morning, a SM7B turned up. Now, first sight, uh, it looks like the SM7B box that I've got. So I had a dig about. I've now got the box and the bits for this microphone that we're using here. Um, and I'd actually forgotten that there's things in the packet that you know, I, I don't use. Um, the SM7B comes with the larger foam windshield. Uh, I've never needed to use that. I guess it's okay if someone really is a bit shouty. Or maybe if you wanted to use it outside, I'm sure that would probably work quite well. Um, and in the box as well, there's a couple of other things. Um, there's a little metal cover plate. Um, it's just a cover plate that goes over the back to stop you accidentally switching the switches. Um, but it's it just goes on with a couple of screws and that's, that's in the box. I've never bothered to put it on. There is a tiny bit of Velcro. <laughs> I've no idea what you're supposed to use it for, uh, but it does appear to be just a little tiny bit of Velcro in a sealed packet. Um, maybe it's for tying down the cable, I don't know, it seems a bit small. What else is there? So, in your original SM7B box, there's a little addendum piece of paper. We've got a fairly chunky instruction book. Uh, some limited warranty paperwork. Yeah, it's, it's fine. I mean, just the usual sort of stuff you get with it. Um, so I wonder. Labels on the end of the box. Now, there is a clue. My friend who sent this tells me that the counterfeits only have one serial number. So. If I sh so if you get a serial number that's the same as that one on a microphone, you'll know it's a dodgy one. So let's whip it out the, out the packet and see what we've got. So let's undo this and see what we have. SM7B user guide. Um, the only difference I can see is same revision. Oh, uh, my one, the, the date on mine is 2015. So I've got, 
I've got a little bit down here in the corner. So my user guide says it's 2015, printed in the USA. Um, the fake one. Twenty twenty, so that could be another clue. Uh, it's also slightly whiter paper, but I think pretty much the rest of it is uh, exactly the same. It's in umpteen languages: French, German, English. Yeah, okay. We've got the same addendum sheet. We've got. Sure sticker. Uh, the limited word. Yeah, paperwork is exactly the same as the other. Um, this is the same. Yep. The metalized cover at the back is in a different plastic packet it's in a zip lock at the top so that's similar enough I guess right let's have a look at the microphone put that out of the way Do you know what? That's that's really close. I would not Yeah. Even even the inside. Let's put that back on. Well, that would convince me. Uh, I don't think I could be. I would be able to tell from looking at the two of them. Uh, it's one little bit. The little grommet at where the cable comes out appears to stick out a little bit further. But it's it's made out of rubber. So the little grommet is not quite seated properly. And that would appear to be it. Um, I need to find an adapter because my mic stand has got the small thread and this won't fit. Bear with me. Okay, so let's see if I put these two things at the same height. Now that's interesting. It doesn't tighten up. Now that is a difference. The the clamp arrangement is not quite the same. And it doesn't appear to be able to do up tight. Hmm, well, that's interesting. Um, and looking at the difference between the two, there are two extra little washers on here. Uh, I see visible on the thing, but um, bear with me while I see if I can fix this. Yeah, that's the difference. Um, the two knurled knobs on the side of the microphone, uh, the, the screwed portion has a couple of flattened flanges on it. So one of the pressure washers is a slot rather than a circle. Um, and the thread that goes into the knurled nuts on the end that you screw up isn't deep enough to compress the washers. So that is a difference. Um, the, the other one, looking at my one, the actual holes are quite deep and they can screw up to sort of 
squash those two washers and hold it nice and tight. Now on this one, it bottoms out. So you do it up and the thread comes to an end before it's tight. Now that, that, my, my feeling is that that would be quite easily fixable. I don't think it's a sort of a major snag, but that's different from the Shure. So that is, a, that's one difference. That's a shame because it was looking good before we started. Um, now we've actually got the two things together and we do appear to have a difference, which I hadn't expected. Anyway, that's one difference. What I might just do is pull the grill off my one. Bear with me. So that's the grill looking into here. It looks fairly standard. You can see there, that's the little rubber bung that goes in that hole, which won't go in any further. So there is a small difference there. Um, looking at the other one, the, the bung on this particular one, so where the cable entry there is on my genuine sure, is absolutely flush with the tube. We can't do that on there, it won't physically go in. So there is a small difference there. I'll just show you the back panels just to make sure that they're the same. So that's that's my one. If we move across to the copy, that's that one. Uh, the finish looks the same. Um, if I show you the mounting point, so the, on my on my microphone, where that knurled nut squashes onto the yoke, you can see it compresses quite nicely. Now that is the problem on here. It's different. So that's not as good as I thought. Same thing on the other side. Um, I mean, it's fixable if you've got the right if, um, if you've got the right bits and pieces. I'm sure we could fix that, but um, I don't think I've actually got them here in in the studio. And then from there, that's the. There we go. So that's uh, a disappointment, really, isn't it? Can I tell a difference in these? Uh, yeah, there is a small difference in the the foam. The the sure foam has got a slightly soft surface. Whereas the counterfeit sure has got an angled edge to it. That edge to it is, is quite angled. So it's a slightly different moulding on there. Okay, um, conclusions then. In this particular section of the video, I'm, I'm fairly close in, closer than I would normally be. So we're in, we're in here, and what I'll do is I'll take the audio for this one and we'll cut it between the original and the counterfeit one, cut them together and see if you can detect the difference. That seems a sensible thing to do, so let's do that one. So, okay, you're listening to me now on the genuine SM7B. This is the sure one that I've had for about four, four, week, four years, five years maybe. And looking at the paperwork in the packet, it's, it's dated 2015. So this is my SM7B. Now we'll go to the counterfeit. So now we're on the counterfeit SM7B. The distinguishing factors, just to make it clear, the things I have spotted that are different is there's a very small angular difference to the front of the foam windshield. Uh, the clamps don't work properly. So there is a difference there. Those clamps, when they screw up, they don't hold it tight at all. Uh, I'll see if I can actually manage to fix those, but I suspect that it's actually misformed and the actual tap that they've used to do the knurled knobs doesn't go in far enough. So you're listening to me now on the counterfeit. The only other difference I can detect at the moment is that the, the little floating cable that goes between the microphone and the socket on the yoke, uh, the 
rubber bung that is there on the end to seal it uh, won't go into the housing completely. I probably could force it in and I guess it would probably stay there, but that's a difference. Now, I can't detect a difference with the paperwork. The paperwork and the packaging do look pretty convincing. So let's go back to the, genu the genuine one again. So now, now we're on the SM7B, the real one. Now the SM7B, I mean, it's not a major expensive microphone, is it? I mean, an SM7B in the UK at the moment, you can get for around about £300, £350, that sort of figure. Um, as far as I'm aware from my friend who's let me have this one, these counterfeits are still not cheap. I mean, the price including tax, if you ordered one from China, is going to be £200. So you're saving 50 quid. Um, I don't think it's worth it. Um, for £50 on a £300 microphone, I'll have the original one every day. Uh, if I had to pick a figure where I would be willing to perhaps use the SM7B counterfeit version, it would have to be 100 quid. Uh, if, if that microphone was £100, I would probably consider that the sort of price where my morals and ethics would throw a bit of a wobbly and maybe for £100 I'd take that microphone. I'm sure I can fix the little technical problems with it, with the clamp. So what do you think? I mean, you're listening to me now on the SM7B counterfeit. Um, is that a £100 mic? Mm, yeah, probably. Is it a £300 mic? No, I don't think it is. Going back to the SM7B, the genuine one, um, I quite like the sound of that now. I got very used to it. It's a fairly neutral sound. And it does work very close in, and it does work at a distance. Now, the copy seems to do the same things there. And certainly, in terms of the way that they've copied the internal structure, it's a good copy. It's just let down a little bit by the assembly. They've actually put it together a little bit, sort of dodgily, you know. That um, the grommet that won't go into the hole. Yeah, you know, it's an easy thing, and they should have fixed it, and they didn't. Uh, the way that this one, when, when it was assembled, somebody in the factory should have noticed that it didn't tighten up. So that's another mistake. So anyway, this is our first uh, counterfeit microphone video. Um, in another one, I'm going to look at another Shure mic, um, a bass drum mic, uh, PGA 52, I think. That's going to come next. So we'll do the PGA 52. Um, I had hoped this test was going to be better than this, uh, and I'm a bit disappointed. I had high hopes for this copy. But as with all things copies, um, it's a little bit variable, isn't it? Anyway. Thanks for watching this one. We've done the SM7B. Uh, that's not been terribly successful. Let's hope we get some better results with the other ones. Anyway, see you on the next video. Take care. Look after yourselves.